Tonight on Beyond the District, we see how one famous singer won a huge award for writing. Beyond the District will return in two minutes. How far would you go to help someone? Would you go to the end of your driveway? Would you cross a street? Would you cross an ocean? Would you go if you could use your knowledge to teach someone? And in the process, maybe learn something yourself. Life is calling. How far will you go? Peace Corps. You may say I'm a dreamer But I'm not the only one I hope someday you'll join us And the world will be as I'm Salas Pizzito, and welcome to TV21's Beyond the District. And I'm Andrea Morjon. Later on tonight, we'll take a look at one special manatee who needs a helping hand. But up first tonight, if you think solving a Rubik's Cube with your... <laughs> hands is difficult, this boy can do it with his feet. Get a load of this kid who can do it with his feet. Yo. That's fun before that. Four months. He was really surprisingly very good. Oh, I just thought, hmm, feet in Rubik's cubes. That would be hard. I wonder if I could do it. And the fact that me solving a magic cube with my feet, it's, I guess it's entertaining to people. Thank you all for watching. I had a viral video of me solving a Rubik's cube with my feet. Only at around 7,000 views, but it's still pretty good. I solved it. I play with it quite a lot. I often will tell him to put it down, that, that he needs to put it away because it's time to do something else. With my hands, um, my personal best is 37 seconds, I think. He's bright. He's, he's actually pretty brilliant. He's uh, battled illness the past year, so he's missed a lot of school. So mo it's more just fun. It's a like a morale booster for him. I'm, I'm actually right there. Right there. I'm done. Yay! Up next, summer may be over, but one dog in Alabama isn't quite ready to let go. Reporter Kat Reed tells us about the four-legged ice cream fanatic. I know. Every ice cream man has that one customer. He loves ice cream, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> who just can't get enough. 
Even though this ice cream addict can hardly reach the counter, he's dogged in his pursuit of a popsicle. This dog always get ice cream from me. Why the owner is watching it? <laughs> and Rambo, a two and a half year old English bulldog, leaves his owner to pick up the tab. He's like, give me my ice cream, my dad will pay you. <laughs> the sweet trend began about a year ago when Rambo saw the ice cream truck for the first time. And Rambo is like all excited out of nowhere. I was like, all right, let's go get some popsicle. And then next thing you know, he's jumping in the truck already, ice cream and truck. Now, every time Rambo hears the ice cream truck's music, he's like a dog with a bone. Only this time, he's looking for a cone. All the dogs in my route, you know, when they hear the music, they're scared. But he is not scared, so it's unique. What a life, huh, Rambo? They say every dog has its day. For Rambo, that's any day the ice cream man drives up. Now, it's a moment she and her family are likely never to forget. Cameras are rolling as a little girl hears her loved one's voices clearly for the very first time. Lara Rolla to share the remarkable moment. I love you the most. It's a language all their own. I love you the most. What? I love you the most. One Gracie understands. I love you. It's been a long morning, an even longer journey, flooded out of their Marion County home, Grandma Lori Lynch already missed one appointment here at MUSC. On the 10th, we were supposed to be here. Coasting over Nichols yields a devastating sight. The small town still without power, Lori's home underwater. They've been living out of an emergency Red Cross shelter in Mullins, South Carolina. They come first, their first priority in my life, my children, God and my children. So. Is there anything that would have stopped you from coming to do this for her? No. Can you smile? Good. <laughs> Can you watch my finger? Dr. Ted Meyer did Gracie's surgery last month. When you hook the device up the first day, you have to be conservative. You don't want to overstimulate the child. And even at a fairly soft level, she's doing well. You ready? Yes. It's excitement Lori says she's almost never seen. Gracie. The moment. When you hear me, raise your hand, okay? All right, turn around. Gracie and Grandma Lori have been waiting for. Bop, 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 bop. A sly look. Bop, 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 bop. Recognition. <gasps> did you hear that? You did. <laughs> I want her to be able to understand okay. everything but my enjoyment for this is going to be her mind growing and her getting to the age level she's supposed to be because she's a very intelligent child. She's taught us a lot, her being deaf, she's, she's taught us a lot. She's actually taught us a lot more than what we've taught her. Where does it go? You do it. Gracie is already back in Mullins and with her cochlear implant, she's better than she was before, if that's even possible. All the Red Cross ladies and the DSS workers and the Sheriff's Office and SLED and National Garments, they are all so excited for her and for me today. They all can't wait for her to come back. They've all grown to love her. Everybody that meets her falls in love with her. Yes. Next, it's very unusual to find a manatee as far north as Cape Cod, but a pregnant manatee who lost her way and was found near there is heading home to Florida. Thanks to the help of a Connecticut aquarium, Matt Reed explains. Her name is Washburn, in honor of the island just off the coast of Falmouth where she was discovered on September 22nd. The 800-pound mammal was rescued by the International Fund for Animal Welfare because water below 68 degrees can be dangerous for manatees and was brought here to the Mystic Aquarium where Washburn has been living the good life. She's been getting about 130, 140 pounds of lettuce a day. But even though the waters and staff at Mystic have been warm to Washburn in her unborn calf, the plan has always been to return the two to Florida. So on Tuesday, after weeks of preparation, Washburn was hoisted onto a crane, loaded into a truck, and brought to the Groton Airport for her first class flight back home. Well, this is considered a dry transport, so she's not going to be submerged in water, uh, but the staff that are going to be on the plane with her are going to be keeping her skin moist by spraying her down. Washburn's first stop will be SeaWorld in Orlando, where her medical treatment will continue. But if all goes well, the plan is to release her into open water so she can give birth there. 
We're seeing that the, that the baby's growing. It's got a nice steady heart rate. Everything looks really good. It was active this morning. And uh, so we're, we're very optimistic. Once she gets resettled into the Sunshine State, Washburn will be chipped so she can be tracked in the future. And while her friends in southern New England are sad to see her go, they're grateful for the time they got to spend with this out-of-towner and are happy Washburn and her baby are leaving healthy. Matt Reed, NBC10 News. Now we're going to take a short break, but coming up, take a, we take a look at a retired military vet who needs a helping hand. And we also take a look at a photo that has gone viral for a good cause. Do you have ID? Yep. Oh, okay, thanks. Hi, do you have ID? No, I don't. Oh, well, you can't be in the building without ID. I need, All I right. need to have it. It's okay. Yeah, security, please, there's a young man in the building without ID, and he's running away from my post here at full duty. Welcome back. A retired military vet is on a new mission in life, armed with a simply a metal detector. His assignment, reuniting people with everywhere with lost wedding rings they thought they might never see again. Caitlin Bulldog reports. Anyone who knows Del Witters knows he's the type of guy I got a target here who never gives up. I'm gonna mark that again just in case we don't find it so that I can come back to it. In fact, that much Dell himself will tell you too. But I'm just kind of a dogged kind of person. I don't want to leave without finding it. It, in this case, is Tom Humphrey's wedding ring. About a week ago I was doing work in the wood pile and a couple days later I realized I didn't have my ring. Humphrey thinks his ring is somewhere underneath all that mulch, though he can't be sure. I got a metal detector from the tool library, but I'm not an expert. I didn't know what I was doing. There was a lot of tuning involved. I didn't find it. He just about gave up until he heard about Dell from a friend. I thought if it was out here, he would find it. Dell is part of a worldwide network of metal detecting specialists called the Ring Finders. I became a member of Ring Finders in 2014. A job the retired military vet takes quite seriously. He accepts missions from all across the Pacific Northwest. I mean, all of them stick with me. I could tell you the stories. He's found rings in gardens, on beaches, in lakes, and in rivers. But perhaps the most intricate ring find landed him here. I honestly, we, I feel like we put him through a little bit of like hell <laughs> that day. In the Columbia River on Caterpillar Island, eventually. We had to inflate an inflatable raft. Uh, we rode him over to the island. We're carrying his expensive equipment on this boat. Um. <laughs> Back to the spot where Danny Rosas lost the ring his wife Raquel made for him by hand. I had like no like you know hopes of getting the ring back again like honestly i thought that once you lost the ring the river is as you know, to the river. Lost. Yeah. yeah well they thought wrong and when i held it up they just went crazy oh we <laughs> lost our marbles we tackled him and the, and the <laughs> we ran out and practically tackled him it's these success stories Tom Humphrey is banking on if he could pull a ring out of the ocean he could maybe pull it out of my wood pile a bunch of wood chips if it's there, I guarantee you I'll find it. 
And sure enough, like clockwork, in the final corner of the yard, he did. Does it look like this? What? <laughs> Thanks, Del. <Dal. laughs> Congratulations. Right. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> it's all in another day's work for Dell. That's the neat part because it's like a needle in the haystack. Who says he's simply happy. He's like Frodo. When you're happy. It's rewarding. I don't know how else to explain it. In North Portland, Caitlin Bolduck, Fox 12 Oregon. Up next, a viral photo may be changing the conversation about locker room banner. Six high school athletes deciding to take a stand for feminism and end making quite the political statement. Catherine Van reports. A picture may be worth a thousand words. This one's worth thousands and thousands of likes. So a lot of like the freshmen are like, whoa, you guys like, I can't believe you guys are doing this. Alex Zapetta and Reese Atkinson and four of their teammates all found in this picture that's going viral, sporting a wild feminist shirt in their locker room. I don't know what would be wrong with us trying to tell others that women deserve the same rights as men and they shouldn't be treated differently. After Donald Trump's controversial remarks about sexual assault circulated in the media, the boys wanted to show what really goes on in a locker room. Usually we talk about like sports and like usually grades. Like our teachers and coaches always get on their heads about that. They want us to succeed and go to colleges. Professional athletes are also taking a stand for feminism. Timbers defender Zarek Valentine and Olympic fencer Miles Chamley Watson shared Instagram posts of them in the same shirt, saying sexual assault is not locker room banter. The creator of the shirt says she never expected to take off so quickly. The way they talk about women um, and the way they treat women is really cool. The idea behind Emma McElroy's shirts is to start conversations. I think when you have young men that can say to other men, like, that's not okay, you, you, you shouldn't say that. Uh, I think that's a huge part of changing the conversation. And with one photo, the conversation has just begun. It just goes to show how like a group of kids can change a school and a student body. Catherine Van, K2 News. Now there's a man in Nebraska who really likes Donald Trump, like really. Miranda Christian reports. It all started when Donald Trump came to visit in May, and Dump Trump was spray painted onto Richard Brock's silos along I-80. I was charged with the task of going to the top of the silos and painting over Dump Trump. Brock wasn't happy about the graffiti that sat on the silos for two weeks. That wasn't my view. It wasn't my uh, opinion on the whole thing, and I was a little upset that Somebody had taken it upon themselves to go be criminals and go vandalize my property. So he made his own Trump sign. The letters on the side of his hill are 90 feet tall and 75 feet wide. Oh, it took an evening. It was just one evening. A bunch of string and some tape measures. To keep the sign visible, Brock trims the letters at least once a week, and it takes about 30 minutes to get through the whole thing. So far, reaction has been mixed. Most of my neighbors are of like mind, but there's there's some that aren't, and that's fine. Everybody's got an opinion, but I think everybody gets a chuckle out of it. Brock says he supports Trump because of his tax plan, national security plan, and he thinks Trump will protect our borders. So when you drive by or fly into Omaha, it's easy to see Brock's support for the GOP candidate. It's just somebody else's opinion. I mean, everybody's got one and, you know, right, wrong or indifferent. Uh, we don't always all agree on things, but I don't think it's right to go vandalize somebody else's property to put my message out there. So I vandalized my own property. It is now time for another break. Coming up later in the show, we will take a look at a woman who has her dog to thank for saving her life. I be on the district. We'll be right back. But I see your true colors shining through. I see your true colors.
You're not Cricky! I know. <laughs> Outcasts and rebels Or anyone who just dares to be different And you've been trying for so long To find out where your place is But in their narrow minds There's no room for anyone Who dares to do something different But listen for a minute Trust the one Who's been where you are Wishing all it was Was sticks and stones Those words cut deep But they don't mean You're all alone And you're not invisible Hear me out There's so much more Welcome back to Beyond the District. I'm Silas Pizzito. If not for her dog, a Missouri woman might be dead. Linda Russell reports. As the flames shot from the roof and smoke poured out of this home on Highway J, the 911 call late Thursday morning came from Diane Gaddy herself. As fire crews arrived, she was already outside. She had made it out to her car. She'd got her dog out and uh, you know, she was able to make it out outside without any uh, injuries. If it weren't for Queenie, Diane's service dog of eight years, her husband, who wasn't home at the time, knows things may have turned out differently. Yeah, the dog woke her up. I spoke with Diane off camera. She tells me she believes she fell asleep in her computer chair and then her service dog Queenie woke her up, alerting her to the smoke in the house so she was able to get out safe. Could have been a much worse outcome. That's really the only thing that matters. The, the rest of it's material stuff. It's, it's you know, it's a it's a, it's a house and it's some stuff in a house, and, but, but it, that's okay because she's, she's still here. So that, that's all I really care about. For the Gaddies, the lifesaver came in the form of a dedicated four-legged friend. But Chief Sturtz hopes everyone has a warning. Well, not many people are going to have service dogs wake them up. Get those uh, fire, fire detectors checked, batteries, and if you need some help with that, please call your local fire district. I'm sure any of us will be willing to come out and check it. JW is just thankful Queenie was by Diane's side when she needed her most. That's, that's why I think everybody needs a dog. I love my dog, uh, and she's, um, you know, that, that's, that's what they're there for. They take care of us. Up next, a good Samaritan, a good deed, and two people who could really use some help all collide in one Missouri town. And as a Krista, and as Krista DeBull reports, this and this story is way better than a fairy tale. The end of this. Two locations. One of them was the corner restaurant in Westport. We watched Courtney, our unsuspecting server, do her work. The man came in, sat briefly for a beverage and then got his chance to chat with Courtney. He found out she's caring for her sick mom. He told Courtney he had something for her. It was a tip in an envelope, even though he wasn't going to eat. She was clearly surprised by the gesture. He left, and we were hoping to capture Courtney opening the envelope, but she just kept working. So her boss, who was in on the surprise tip, had to go get her, and then. Are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> this is incredible. I've never even had. It. <laughs> I don't even know what to do. <laughs> Immediately, you said you were going to do stuff with for your mom with this. Uh -huh. you take a little bit of it and do something for yourself. What what could that be? If you could do something for yourself, what would it be? Um, I need to get new tags. <laughs> I'll definitely probably get maybe my nails done or something. I don't know. Okay, something know. nice, but uh, groceries. Next up was the first watch nearby. This time, the Good Samaritan was seated in Mauricio's section. Mauricio, again, had no idea. Okay, then also don't forget to check the special that we have right here. A server for 10 years, Mauricio moves quickly around the restaurant, always with a smile. He caught us taking his picture, so we moved in. 
and the Good Samaritan, as he had planned, moved out. Oh my God. Is this the biggest tip you've ever gotten? This is the bigger in my whole life. So what can you do with that money? What can I do with this money? I want to tell you, you know, I'm saving money to go to see my family in Chile. And this is what I tell you about. Um, thank you, appreciate it so much. Up now, jumping, jumping off a bridge sounds a little crazy, but not to several people in West Virginia. This weekend, some base jumpers plunge off a nearly 900-foot bridge at New River Gorge Saturday, just for fun. As Justin McClellan reports, a huge crowd turned out to see them. For the tens of thousands attending Bridge Day 2016, it's all about seeing this iconic state symbol from a different perspective. To walk across the bridge that you normally drive across is pretty exciting, and then to go below and uh, look back up at the jumpers. Each October, thrill seekers and spectators from all over come to experience the bridge in their own way. It has been awesome. The weather's perfect, and watching the jumpers is a, a great thing. Some of them are shaking a little bit, some of them are nervous, some of them are excited, and then to see them plunge and to uh, float through the air and then wait until the last minute to pull the cord, it's, uh, it's exciting. Most are perfectly content with watching from the sidelines. I would never do that. That takes a lot of guts. Lots of them. But for the ones with the guts, the best view is the one from the edge. Yeah, it's, uh, it's nerve wracking, even if you've done it. I mean, some of these guys are really good. Maybe they don't get nervous, but I get pretty nervous. Base jumper Ricky Hoyt traveled nine hours from upstate New York just for the chance to leave off the bridge. He's repacking his chute to get ready for his third jump of the day. So we can go any other time. So today, while well, it's legal, try to get as many as we can. In. Hoyt says if you can block out the nerves, it's really quite simple. You just set your mind, step off, and you're good, hopefully. Here for you at Bridge Day, Justin McLennan, WVBA News. If you have a story you would like us to recover. Or if you have an announcement about an upcoming event, please send it to interschool mail to the TV studio at High School East, or you can email us at tr tv21 at trschools.com. Also, be sure to tune, tune in TV21 throughout the day to catch the show and Tom's River Schools today as we bring you stories from around the district. Also, please take a look at our website, www.trschools.com slash TV21. Well, that wraps up tonight's show for, for Beyond the District. I'm Salas Pazito. And I'm Andrew Morjon. Have a great night. This world makes you crazy, yeah.